Let's begin by gathering all the necessary components – axles, backing plates, brake discs, brake calipers, e-brake shoes, blue thread locker, and all the necessary hardware. Prep the axle housing for install by making sure it is clean and free of residue. Remove caliper bracket from backing plates. Remove e-brake shoe retainer from the backing plates. Slide brake shoe down and out of the actuator. Secure the actuator from coming apart. Use a rubber band or zip tie to secure. Install the axles. The longer axle is the passenger side. The shorter axle is the driver side. Make sure axle splines engage with the center gears. The seated axle should cover the black compression seal in the axle housing. This seal should be completely inside the housing once it is seated. Slide backing plate up and over the axle, using the temporary nuts and bolts to hold the backing plate in place. Pro tip! We use temporary hardware because the T-bolts and jet nuts which are included in the kit are considered one-time use. In testing fit, if something doesn't fit as expected and you need to remove the bolts, you will need new hardware. By using temporary hardware, we can make sure everything fits correctly before tightening and torquing the T-bolts and jet nuts to spec. Align the axle access hole with the temporary nuts. Tighten down these bolts for now while we install the e-brake components. Slip e-brake shoe over hub face. Depending on your setup, the brake shoe may need to be slipped over the axle between the hub face and the backing plate instead of going over the hub face as shown. Slide shoe feet into the actuator as shown. Reinstall the shoe retainer bracket to the backing plate. Install this between the shoe and backing plate. Be sure the retainer clips in under the rim of the shoe. Reinstall the screws to secure the shoe mount to the backing plate. Use blue thread locker on these fasteners and torque to 4 foot-pounds. Install the T-bolts and corresponding jet nuts. Align hub face access hole to install a washer and nut. Rotate the axle again to align the access hole. Install the four T-bolts and jet nuts, replacing the temp bolts as you go. Remove the temporary bolts if used in the initial fit test. Replace temp hardware with supplied T-bolts and jet nuts. You'll notice that when you install your axles, the bearing seal will protrude outward past the housing flange slightly. This is normal. The axle seal used is a crush seal that engages fully when the backing plate is torqued down. By compressing the axle seal with the backing plate, the seal expands to fill the axle housing opening, ensuring no fluid leaks. Tighten the four T-bolts to torque spec in a cross pattern. Notice the gap closing. The backing plate should sit flush with the axle housing. This is important in order to fully engage the axle seal. Place brake disc over hub face and brake shoes. Test disc for movement to make sure the axle or disc isn't binding. Using a few washers and lug nuts, secure the brake disc to the hub temporarily to ensure proper caliper installation. Make sure disc still rotates without binding. Test fit the brake caliper and caliper bracket. Verify caliper and disc clearance. Your setup may or may not need to be shimmed slightly in order to get proper pad clearances on the rotor. The most accurate process for shimming your brake caliper is covered in your bare brakes installation manual. We advise consulting that guide in addition to watching this video during final installation. These are your brakes, they are important. Once you have determined if your setup needs to be shimmed or not, 
Apply blue thread locker to the caliper bracket bolts and install the brake caliper bracket to the mounting plate. Apply a small amount of blue thread locker to the caliper bolts as well. Insert the brake caliper bolts into the caliper bracket. We are using a single washer shim between the bracket and caliper in order to move the pad alignment outward. Carefully install the brake caliper without knocking the shims or bolts out of the bracket. Get one bolt started, then pivot the caliper to get the other bolt started before tightening. Torque caliper bracket bolts to 75 foot-pounds. Torque caliper bolts to 85 foot-pounds. Verify pad alignment is still centered after tightening. Install included flex line. Start by fastening to the hard line on the axle housing, then to brake caliper. The hard line fittings may need to be adjusted slightly to ensure line is not kinked. Torque banjo fittings to 15 to 20 foot pounds. Tighten flex line to the hard line fitting. Also, secure the hard line fittings if they were adjusted, ensuring the line itself doesn't interfere with any other components. Follow the normal brake bleeding procedure and double-check your work before driving the vehicle. Enjoy your chassis and brakes and call us if you have any questions.